Hi there, Lindy Goodall here from Lindy G Embroidery, and in this video I'll show you some simple basic customizing tricks for creating quilt blocks that work well when your fabric is too small to hoop. This method also works best with uh, stable or low distortion designs like red work and applique, like the two embroidered blocks you see in the snack mat or mini placemat perfect for desserts. These designs are from Crazy for Cupcakes and I've used them as is right off the collection with no resizing. So let's get to it. I've opened in Brilliance Essentials and now I need to bring in my designs. I'll start with the red work block. So go to the Merge tool, navigate to your designs, and I want to select the this one, this one, and this one. And you can see that they're green check marks and I've just selected them by holding down the command key and I'll import those. And You can see they're all piled up here in the middle. You can also see them listed over here in the objects pane. So let's move those to the order that we want. And I want mine in that order and I want them to sew from top to bottom. But over here in the objects pane you can see that when I selected that one it's got the bottom one selected. And it's going to sew from top to bottom here. So I need to move that. I'll right click and say move first and I'll right click on this one and move it earlier. So now when I click on these you can see that the right ones are highlighting over on this side. So let's do a little rotation and I'm going to rotate this one 19 degrees. So I select it, type in 19 into the rotation box, select that one 19 and this one I want to do 19 in the other direction so I'll do minus 19 and there we have our cupcakes and we might want to move them a little bit closer together we probably also want to center them in the hoop and we also want to align them so let's get them straight so we'll do that and now they're all centered and if I was just going to sew these normally by hooping my fabric with my stabilizer between the rings of the hoop, I'm good to go. But I'm working from my stash and I don't have a lot of fabric. I don't have enough fabric, in fact, to hoop both of these blocks that I want to do in this, this particular fabric. But I do have enough to cut my quilt blocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a basting box that's the size of my finished square or my finished rectangle in this case. And so what I'll do is I'll start by basting the design and then I need to resize that. Notice that the basting box automatically goes at the beginning. Pretty smart program, huh? So I'll select that and my finished block size after it's been stitched in is 2.75, 2 and 3 quarter inches wide by 6 and a quarter inches tall. So I need to change this to a 2. And change this to 3.25. And there's my block. And let's center that in the hoop as well. Well, we didn't really want to do that. We want to get it around our designs the way we want it. So I could now, since I know that this is my finished area, I might want to spread my cupcakes out a little bit, get a little bit more space between them. And when I'm happy, um, that's pretty good. This basting box, I'm going to stitch right directly on my stabilizer. Then I'll smooth down my fabric because I'll know where I need to put it. Then I want to put another basting box just to baste it to the hoop. Now I could just back up at the machine and do that, but you know sometimes I forget and it's easier to me for me if I just have my design ready to go to the machine and I don't have to futz around with do I skip this color, do I go back a color. So we're going to copy and paste this. Copy, paste, and you can see now that it's at the end of my list. So we'll move that first and I want to make this one a different color. So we can just pick any color. 
And the reason I'm making this a different color is because on most of our home machines we have a single needle. So the machine sews one color, it stops, we have to change the, the thread color and that sort of thing. So what this will allow the machine to do is stop so I can remember to put down my fabric and I don't have to remember to stop the machine at a certain point. If I wanted three different cupcake colors, I could just select the middle one and change that to a different color. And now the machine will sew those different colors and we're good to go. It doesn't matter what colors are on the screen, it matters what colors you put in your machine. So now we're ready to go. Now one thing I should mention, these colors look pretty much the same. And if I really wanted to make sure that my machine stopped, I might want to pick a totally different color like orange. And the reason I'm telling you this is some formats recognize true thread colors and they'll know that these are three different shades of red. But on some machines that have a simpler color palette, if you have, if I had this too close a shade of red to these other two, it might say, oh, I'm going to map it to the same red and you would still end up with all one color there. So it's a good thing to pick radically different colors, particularly if you know your machine doesn't have a true color palette. So now I'm ready to save and I'll just save it and send it to my machine and I'm ready to sew. The applique block is created in a similar way. So let's make that one. We'll create a new document and once again I'll merge in the cupcake I want. This time I want this one with the cherry on top and click import. And there it is. So we're going to do a similar thing. This one we don't need to do a whole lot with. We're just having the one design. I want to do the basting box trick again. So I'll go to utility, base design, and you can see that I have a very rectangular block here. But if you remember the placemat, it had a very square block. And also the block was on point. So let's resize this one and this time I'm going to use millimeters. I drew this pattern in Adobe Illustrator and um, I was actually using millimeters so we'll use millimeters just to be different here. And there's our block. So we'll duplicate it again like we did before, copy, paste, move it to the beginning, make it a different color, and because we want our block to sew on point, we're going to place it on point in our project, I'm going to rotate the cupcake rather than rotate the basting boxes. And the reason is if you're sewing in a 5 by 7 hoop, you would have to use a much bigger hoop if you're going to sew this on point. So we'll just rotate our cupcake, select the cupcake, minus 45 or 45, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to move it just to where I think it looks good. And that's all we have to do for that one. Save it in your format, send it to your machine, and sew it just the way we talked about before. So I hope you find some useful tricks in here that you can use. I've used in Brilliant Essentials. You can download a free demo from the link that's provided below. You can also read more about this in a blog post I've written, and the link for that is below. I hope you'll give this a shot. It's so fun to create your own designs and to customize them and to do things to make them look more you. So have a great day.